Welcome everybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Pinguy OS 13.10 Beta 2. This will be the uh, final release for the 13.10 uh, cycle. They consider all non-LTS releases as uh, Beta 2 in their final phase. So although the, it's considered a Beta, it's uh, very much a solid um, operating system. So let's take a look at the uh, the largest changes, and I'll go uh, clockwise from um, top corner and around. So you have your uh, your recent tab, and you'll see a bunch of screencast tests that I did earlier to correct the audio problems of my previous video. You'll have uh, shortcuts to videos, or I'm sorry, your Firefox shortcuts for your default browser, and places. So you click on that and it will uh, bring in the places. So let's take a quick look at applications. Let me open that again. Whoops. Alright, so I just started using this yesterday so I'm still getting a feel for the uh, desktop. So you have accessories, uh, docky, which you see right here, this really nice uh, dock mechanism, which is also used over to the left for folders. Now this is really nice because it stays open when, um, when you're working in it, and you can click out of it rather than a, a hover effect. So that's a nice feature, and maybe that's uh, editable within the preferences. We'll take a look at that later. File manager, which is Nemo, GE Edit image viewer shutter which is a really cool um, screen grab uh, application works really well under games you have steam and play on linux graphics you have uh, libreoffice draw image viewer And it looks like GIMP isn't installed, but that's easy enough to install from the repos. This is already at like a 2.3 gigabyte download, so you get a lot of uh, extra features. This is perfect for um, users who are migrating from maybe their first Linux desktop, uh, no matter what that is, and maybe they want to discover some uh, new applications that Linux has to offer. For instance, um, Mumble is an alternative to Skype. And, uh, you know, something like a, a media server connection with your PS3, uh, Team Viewer, which is used for video conferencing as well. Skype is also included. So a lot of user-friendly applications are included with Ping iOS, and that's actually part of the philosophy that um, the designers put into this uh, desktop environment and this distribution. So they've selected applications based on their ease of use and uh, likelihood that a new user to Linux would uh, easily pick up and understand. VLC, which is great for uh, video playback, playing back uh, YouTube videos for instance. You could just uh, um, load them directly into VLC if you don't want to watch them in the browser. All right, so what we have here is uh, the open applications. So if I go in and open a few more applications, you'll see some icons show up. No problem. Really kind of cool. Oops. Not all of them will have icons, but some of them will. I'm going to skip that. It's going to be uh, programs that stay open in the background that show up here. So for instance, Shutter, and of course I'm, I'm using a Kazam which I downloaded from the repositories. So even though I'm closing it, the applications are still live. Uh, workspace Switcher, by default you have one and two, and you could always go in there and add some more. Uh, a mail client, this is more of a, uh, so Thunderbird is included by default, but you can always add another uh, email browser if you like, or email program. Skype, Empathy for Chat, and uh, XChat IRC. I haven't used Friends, I'm not sure uh, 
how that one works. That's a new application to me. This here is your uh, desktop viewer. So you can actually, um, there's, there's two ways to edit your desktop. You could do the backgrounds through the traditional method of choosing the backgrounds. Or you can use the um, variety, pre uh, variety application and you could set it to change your wallpaper every five minutes and it will actually download from any uh, URLs that are grabbing um, feeds. So right now I have it uh, grabbing from a picture a day from NASA and so in the next uh, five minutes or so you'll see some new stuff pop up. Now this is the uh, uh, settings for languages. So right, I have uh, English UK and English US installed. Calendar. And uh, your applets for audio, uh, microphone level, brightness, Wi-Fi, battery. Clementine is uh, stopped. And then of course uh, user preferences, logging out. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, settings here. So of course we can go in and change our background notification preferences on which applications can notify you, online accounts, and um, privacy settings, language, search preferences, uh, color, Bluetooth, set up your display preferences, keyboard including shortcuts for the uh, applications in the system. Mouse and touchpad preferences for your computer and or laptop. Network settings. You guys just got a good view of all my neighbors uh, Wi-Fi settings there. Power preferences. It's very clean layout. Looks really good. And it you wouldn't be able to see this, but it looks like I just dimmed my settings. So I'm going to go back into power settings and fix this. Do, do, do. Now this is back. I'm going to assume this M570 is my mouse. Let me take a look at my Logitech uh, trackball here, and I believe that is the model number. If I unplug my external keyboard, oh, I see. Oh, that's neat. Um, I actually had a uh, external keyboard paired with my Logitech device that would tell me um, that would connect to the device. So it looks like um, that's grabbing the stuff from Logitech. That's really cool. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Linux Mint Debian Edition would keep thinking that my mouse battery is dead every time it uh, went into sleep mode. Printer settings, uh, sound settings for uh, your microphone and speakers. Deja uh, dupe backup tool. I actually tend to use Clonezilla and just do a, a direct copy of my ISO and so I could reboot it. Um, from a certain point. So I haven't actually used Deja Dupe and it's probably a little bit easier because Clonezilla is, is another ISO. So here's the uh, GNOME, information, uh, GNOME information and information on my computer. Default applications, I haven't changed any of those. All right. Of course you've got Docky and uh, set up for the locations within your file browsers. There is a uh, GNOME tweak tool. So you can change the preferences on, on what's active and what's inactive. So if you want a traditional um, GNOME 3 uh, display, you would simply turn off all these devices and then turn them back on. So you'll notice as I'm turning all of these off and all the hard work, suddenly my computer looks just like standard GNOME 3.10.1. The, uh, the colors will have changed. I've got the uh, traditional layout for there. And then of course I go in and um, turn
turn them back on. Why not? Don't need that. I'll put that one on. These ones that say remo remove are presumably the ones that were included by the uh, developer. Let's see, user themes. Oh, that's cool. That's a user theme. Window list. So you can go through here and make a lot of uh, It looks like I still have my, um, oh, here we are. Launch new instance. Oh, wow, I did not realize that was a feature. It wasn't there by def default. So check this out. If you're looking for a distribution that has more of a uh, traditional gnome, oh, that is so cool. I did not see that in yesterday's video. You can go directly to your applications from here if you want to. Hmm. Looks like it didn't quite take effect, so I'll turn it off for now. restart this because it looked like it was acting a little strange. Let me try that again. Let me try this one more time. Now you could also go in and change fonts. There's plenty of fonts pre-installed. ton of them. So you could change the interface, the documents, I mean the uh, window tiles, preferences for your mouse and keyboard, power uh, settings, and these are these are all basically overrides from the uh, generic GNOME or default GNOME settings. One thing to point out though, and the developer mentioned this in their news column, is that, oh, that would be because I restarted the desktop. that there is one minor uh, bug where if you um, log out and log in in another GNOME type session your system default will go back to the default so make sure to log in as system default um, each time oh I don't have any applications Cool. Well, this is quite exciting um, that I found something new in just this one update. Let's see if there's anything else I'm missing before I complete this video for today. Oh, yes, I did forget. So there are multiple ways to get around the uh, desktop, of course. You can log out here, go into your preferences, lock the screen, power down, or you can go through and do the, uh, some of the same stuff here, this will restart the shell if you have any glitching, so you didn't have to do the um, Alt F2 trick that I did and hit R for reload. Suspend power, log out user, lock screen, and preferences. It's really convenient that they have those right there on the menu. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the uh, system preferences later and make it so that when I hit the uh, meta key, it will actually um, go in Oops. it will go in and um, kick off this menu rather than um, the gnome shell but this is great because you could actually go in and um, access your system like you would in um, gnome shell so you could do both have it either way whichever is more productive for that given moment in time anyway Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.